Where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. God has given us unlimited treasures in his word. Every time we open it, we can discover a new treasure or admire an old one. What will we find today? Let's dig in. Here's Carla Early with Treasure Hunt in the Word. What is your purpose in life? God created everything for a purpose, and we know he has plans for each of us. The Westminster Shorter Catechism says the chief end of man is to glorify God and enjoy him forever. Several scriptures would agree, but how we glorify him and find joy in him differs from person to person. To be honest, since my children left home, I've been having trouble finding my purpose. While I was homeschooling, I knew that was exactly what I needed to be doing. I knew it was eternal. Knowing and doing the will of God glorifies him and gives us joy. Have you ever rebelled and ignored God's guidance and done your own thing? I sure have. And I agree with the way David describes the feeling in Psalm 38. Your hand presses down on me. My whole body is sick. My guilt overwhelms me like a heavy burden, too heavy for me to carry. I am exhausted and completely crushed. I know when I was in rebellion against God, I felt like I was just going to wither up and die if I didn't confess my rebellion, repent, receive his forgiveness, and get back in God's will for me. Back in Genesis, God told Abraham the purpose of his family. One of the reasons he had chosen Abraham, and consequently the Israelites, they were to be a blessing to all the earth. They were to be his people that he could work through to bless all the rest of the people he had created. But they weren't. Now back in the Old Testament, several of the prophets, Jeremiah, Joel, and Hosea, likened the nation of Israel to a fig tree. So when Jesus encountered a fig tree in Matthew 21, what happened next had an even deeper meaning than it seems. It says, Now in the morning, as he returned to the city, he was hungry. And seeing a fig tree by the road, he came to it and found nothing on it but leaves and said to it, Let no fruit grow on you ever again. Immediately the fig tree withered away. I'm sure this shocked the disciples. They'd seen Jesus heal people, calm the sea, multiply food, but this was different. He'd always used his power to bless, heal, and help people, but here he used it in judgment. He'd never done that before. They'd seen the Messiah, who, as Isaiah put it, preached the gospel to the poor, mended the brokenhearted, and set the captives free, and proclaimed the year of the Lord. Not the one who, as the text went on to say, would declare the judgment of our God. But this judgment wasn't just on the fig tree. Symbolically, it was for Israel, too. Instead of accepting their Messiah with open arms and sharing him with the world as they should have, the Jewish leaders were questioning his authority, trying to trap him, and in a few days, they would have him crucified. Like the fig tree and its leaves, they looked good but were producing no fruit. They were rebelling against their purpose. When we rebel against God, like the fig tree in Israel in the next few generations, we wither up and die. Of course, not all of Israel rebelled. The disciples, Paul, and most of the first Christians saved at Pentecost a few months later were Jews who obeyed their calling, their purpose, and spread the good news to the ends of the earth. Are you living out your purpose? Or are there areas in your life withering away because of sin? What step does God want you to take today toward fulfilling his purpose in your life? You can contact us at treasurehuntintheword at gmail.com. We'd love to hear the treasures God has given you through his word. You can listen to other episodes at our website, which you can find in the description below. Thanks for listening, and remember, where your treasure is, there will your heart be also.